Hey everybody, we are so excited that you have joined us. Um, we are going to talk about suicide over the next four podcasts. Uh, so we call this Suicide Week, not of course you hurt yourself, right. but... How about Suicide Awareness Week? Suicide Awareness <laughs> Week. a little bit better, yeah. <laughs> But suicide is the 10th leading cause of death, but it's the one that perhaps uh, is so emotionally impactful on everybody in your life. Mm -hmm. But first, we have some um, reviews of the Brain Warriors Way podcast. I woke up this morning, actually, to this one. It's from a woman in Singapore. So the podcast is going around the world. Jennifer Ng, uh, I've been listening to your podcast ever since I start, stumbled on the Brain Warriors Way. I go for an early morning six to nine kilometer walk, and you're my favorite accompaniment. I love that. Um, your latest one with Colonel Jill Chambers and Michael Peterson literally left me in tears. My husband suffered from severe depression and other associated mental health issues for decades, in addition to being severely overweight and just being physically sick. Don't you find that they yeah, often they go do. together? The psychiatric treatments he has had over the years left him unlike the person I knew when we first met. It was like he had this massive, foul-smelling and dense, dark brain fog that followed him perpetually. Whenever he got an episode, I'd just say that Dr. Doom's in the house. Mm. And yes, it's been incredibly stressful dealing with this. People often don't talk about the stress on the family of having, of living with someone who's anxious, angry, depressed, addicted. Thankfully, a few years ago, he started to turn his life around through exercise, eating clean, and getting the right supplements. Until I heard Colonel Jill and her husband share their experiences, I realized that my husband has been dealing with some sort of post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder that has never been treated. Um, and then they go on to say they wish they could come and get uh, a spec scan, but until then, they're just so grateful for this information. What I like is that this is a good point. She says until they can, because they're coming from Singapore, just the, the flight is, you know, uh, expensive. But she said until they can actually come to the U.S. and do what they would like to do, which is get a spec scan, they're just doing everything that we talk about, the whole program. That's what we want you to do. Do the program, right? So um, if you can't Because that's also in, what we're going to tell you to do if you come to the right. Edelman Clinics. Do we're the program. We're going to tell you... Um, every day is this good for my brain or bad for it and you want to know um so do you have any experience with suicide in your life oh dear lord um not so much in my immediate family but my my stepmother um in her side of the family so i have two half sisters and my stepmother she had poor thing she her sister her brother and like five cousins so she's had a lot. And so I saw that impact, you know, her and my dad when I was young growing up and, you know, the impact it had on that, the entire family. It was really hard. And I remember being around, it was really sad because her sister um, really liked me when I was little. Like for some reason, she just took a liking to me. She was severely depressed, bipolar, and isolated herself in her room. And then she'd have moments of thinking she was someone else. It was interesting. I'm not exactly sure what all that was about, but um, I was pretty young um, and it could be really scary. But what I mostly remember was that she was always really kind to me. Even when she was in a really bad state, she was always kind to me. Um, and so it was so sad and just so horrifying. And, you know, to see this person not be able to come out of the room, she wouldn't bathe, she wouldn't do anything. And then one day, you know, I just, I got the message that she had taken a gun and ended her life. Yeah, so it's completely against what we were made to do or what we have evolved to do, which is protect ourselves. So when people um, become hopeless or helpless or feel worthless, they're more likely to do something 
that hurts themselves. A study just came out today that having a head injury doubles the risk of suicide. Wow. Uh, and I've known that for a long time, that traumatic brain injury is a major cause of depression, and so few people actually know about it. Right. So if we look at what could cause someone to feel so hopeless, helpless, worthless, having a diagnosed mental health condition, especially depression, panic disorder, bipolar disorder, where you go between two poles, you can have really severe low lows and high highs. Um, in those low periods, there's a high incidence of suicide. Mm -hmm. People who have ADHD have a higher incidence of suicide because of the impulsivity. There's actually a study from um, Washington State in Seattle. It actually said 55% of the population in Seattle at some point in their life have had suicidal ideas. Wow. So having the ideas is not that So you got to wonder abnormal. why Seattle is it the weather? Well, it's seasonal yeah, affective, affective disorder, yeah. which means, you know, they go months right. without seeing much of so, the but sun. So low vitamin D and... And remember when we actually shot the cookbook mm. in Seattle... I was only there for a week and I was getting in wonky. In January. But it, it almost felt oppressive. Yeah, and I take right? vitamin D and I was like, oh my gosh, this is just... This isn't like just rain, this is just gray. It was not that much fun. Mm -mm. And... Um, so there's actually some, it, there is evidence that the weather can play a role. So we've talked about mental health issues, including ADD, weather can play a role. So, um, but most people think the highest incidence of suicide is December. But in fact, that's the lowest in, incidence Interesting. December. Um, you just... Feel highest like you want to die. Highest for heart attack. Yeah, Christmas Day. Because, but the highest month is April. And my first thought, well, of course, that's when you have to pay your taxes. So you'd rather like <laughs> really? go to the other side than Seriously? pay your taxes. But what, what's interesting is people have often had winter depressions where they've thought about suicide, but they didn't have the energy. So they were just to too do down it. to even do it. But as um, the sun came out for longer in April and they began to get the energy. They would do something that they have been thinking about. In the military, it's actually different. The highest months of suicide are July and January, which are the months of military moves. So when you move and you lose your connection to your tribe, you become more vulnerable. And often on the show, when, when we talk about why um, things happen, we always talk about four circles. There's a biological circle, a psychological circle, a social circle, and a spiritual circle. Mm -hmm. So let's just dive into it a little bit and then over the rest of the week, we'll, we'll talk about more. So the biological causes of suicide so major mental health problems. You right. described your stepmother's family loaded Genetically, for it's depression terrible. and right. suicide. And so there's genetic causes. If you have family members that have done it, you're more vulnerable. That means you just have to take care of yourself more. Um, we've talked about mental health issues. We've talked about traumatic brain injury. Now, I remember when you told me you had thyroid cancer. Oh, my and gosh. And even though you were not actively suicidal, you were sort of hoping. So, which is interesting. That ties into the spiritual and, and social. So the reason I don't think I was suicidal is because my religious beliefs um, really kept me from going to that really that other place. And also because of my mom. It was my mom. I knew my mom wouldn't survive it. So those connections... Um, are the only thing that really kept me from going there. I, I thought about dying. I actually thought how convenient it would be if a truck just hit me. <laughs> but, I, but I couldn't do it myself. <laughs> like 
So when your thyroid is low, you're more likely to have suicidal ideas. And then looking at some other biological causes, if you have high lead, high mercury, you're more likely to be depressed. If you've been exposed to mold and you have brain fog, you're more likely to be depressed and entertain suicidal ideas. If uh, you have something like Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. uh, and it goes into a concept Marty Seligman first pioneered. I love this concept from him. It's called learned helplessness. Is you try to feel better and it doesn't work. And you try and it doesn't work. And you try and it doesn't work. And you try and it doesn't work. And pretty soon you say to hell with it and you stop trying. So that's when you learn to be hopeless. You have to wonder why some people that happens and they give up and they have this learned helplessness and others just decide they're going to fight. And it's almost like a, you know, I'm going to show you type no of, matter what happens, no matter it's about what a third of people. Isn't and it's about a third of animals that no matter what happens to them, they have this Drive. level of resilience. Right. Um, so biological and some medications can actually Oh cause dear, so I have to tell you about that one. Um, so about probably 12, thir probably 13 years ago, it was probably shortly before I met you, um, I went through something medical where I was couldn't sleep and then they prescribed me some Ambien for about a week and so I could sleep at night. And I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh good, I get to sleep at night, right? So I took the Ambien the first night and I woke up the next day feeling really wonky wonky just in the brain just not right i did not feel right i felt down i felt tired foggy just didn't i felt off my game completely but i thought okay well whatever it's probably just whatever i was going through i didn't really think much of it um took the ambient again the second night woke up the next day crying uncontrollably and if you'd have asked me why no idea no no idea i wasn't depressed that i know of but suddenly i had zero control over my emotions like it was so crazy so, I mean, I think there are medications that can do that to people even when they're not technically supposed to. So almost all medications have psychiatric side effects and almost, I think pretty much all of the psychiatric medications have black box warnings saying this medication in vulnerable people may increase the risk of suicide. Now, are sleeping so, pills one of those that are yes, particularly? You like, I've never, ever taken them again. Because if you have a sleepy brain, and then they give you something to calm it down, it may in fact disinhibit your brain, oh, making you yeah, more likely sense. to have trouble. So as we continue Suicide Week, um, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about some of the psychological causes of suicide and what you can do about it. Stay with us. Use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or on our supplements at brainmdhealth.com. Thank you for listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Go to iTunes and leave a review and you'll automatically be entered into a drawing to get a free signed copy of the Brain Warriors Way and the Brain Warriors Way cookbook we give away every month.